Hello, hi everyone. Hopefully you're starting to come in and join the webinar now. Yep, I can see the numbers going up. Uh, welcome. We were just actually talking about how it's all gone a bit wintry and uh, and dark uh, where where I am. So it's all it's all feeling a bit um yeah a, 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 a bit uh, autumnal, which is a bit strange. But anyway, I hope you are all well and actually having some sunshine. If you are um, just coming in now, it'd be lovely for you to post in chat, which you should be able to find at the bottom. Um, just post where you're joining us from. That would be uh, lovely. Uh, so we can find out where in the world everybody is, because that's always very exciting. Um, so thank you everyone for joining us. Um, I'm Claire from Cop Pens, and our workshop this evening is going to be uh, led by the marvellous Jenny Moncaster, who you can hopefully see on screen. We're going to switch to Jenny in a bit. Um, so Jenny's going to be telling us all about the Dela Brownie System 3 family of products and she's going to be using the heavy body acrylic inks, um, not inks, acrylic paint and the Kandahar inks uh, and she's uh, going to be telling us all about that and uh, how they're working together and there's some exciting reveal and techniques going on because we had a little demo yesterday uh, so I hope you all love it and I can see everyone's putting their locations in so great thank you keep doing that if you're just joining us now. So before I hand over, um, as usual, just a few bits of housekeeping uh, to cover off. So we are recording the session, but don't worry, your cameras and your sound are all off for the whole uh, duration. Um, so apart from us presenting, no one can see you or hear you. If you do have any questions, then the chat function that you're all using already to tell us where you are, you can pop your questions in there and you can use the Q&A button as well. It's all at the bottom. You should have it all across the bottom of your screen. So we'll be keeping an eye out in there. So there's myself um, answering questions and Anna from the Colt Pens team and Carly has joined us as well, who's from Dale Rowney. So we're hoping that between us, we can cover everything. Um, if not, we will uh, ask you for your email address. We'll, we'll come back to you if there's anything that we need to go off and check. Um, sometimes there is. And uh, I will be gently, trying to gently, interrupt Jenny with any of your questions as well, if she can answer anything along the way. We love questions. Um, I think, Jenny, you're open to questions, so it's all good. Keep uh, keep posting any questions that you have in the bottom. And, uh, and, and as I say, we'll interrupt as we go through and ask Jenny to help us out with those. Um, we think our session is going to last a, about an hour, so get comfy. Um, spread out a bit if you're going to join in and um, uh, join in with Jenny along the way. So a bit of a drum roll. Um, I'm sure many of our ten attendees uh, will know Jenny already, but I'm going to switch over our cameras. I'm going to ask you to start, Jenny, by introducing yourself and telling us a little bit about you. Hi, thank you, Claire. Hello, everybody. Do you know I'm quite excited because I've just seen a few people from Winchester and around hey. the road, just down the road, me neighbours. That's brilliant. So, yeah, I'm Jenny Moncaster and I'm an acrylic, mainly an acrylic artist. Um, but I kind of call myself a mixed media artist because I love all sorts of different art materials. Um, playing around with them, seeing what they do, mixing it up a little bit. And I have been working as a professional artist kind of since I left art school, really. So I was at Winchester School of Art. I'm in Winchester in Hampshire. That's where I'm based. And I set up the Colour Factory Studios in Winchester. Um, it's a great sort of hub of creativity. We've got six artists that are, that are working under the roof together. We do workshops open to the public. We have a little gallery as well. We're all absolutely passionate about sharing our love of art and uh, the, the skills that we've kind of built up along the way. And um, so I've done kind of quite a lot of professional work in terms of big paintings for commissions for, wow, um, people like um, Hotel Devan, Brasserie Blanc in the day, um, cruise ships, Caribbean, the Royal Caribbean, the Shard even, so lots and lots of big paintings and also some smaller sort of pieces as well. So I work um, to create smaller bespoke paintings to commission and, and all sorts of things. And I love um, I love teaching, I love presenting, and I've been working with Dale around me now for a few years, absolutely love their products. So I'm really lucky to work with them and get to play with, with art materials. It's, it's what I love. So I'm particularly 
um, passionate about kind of talking about the system three family of products because they're all acrylic based. And as an acrylic artist, I'm always looking for the sort of latest new product or what we can do with it, how we can kind of mix it up a bit. And, and I'll talk a little bit about the System 3 family, because in fact, if you've joined me on some workshops before, I've already done a workshop on System 3 acrylic inks. That was my first one with you, Claire, wasn't it? Absolutely. Yes, yeah, I'll share the links to these actually as you're, as you're doing it. So brilliant. Okay, yes. Yeah, so the System 3 acrylic ink, again, all of these products in the family of acrylics from System 3 are all intermixable and their colours are compatible throughout the range. So again, if you're a mixed media artist and you're not, oh look, I'm going to hold, see if I can hold them all up together. I don't, I'm, I sort of have, I'm a bit geeky. I have to have them in the right order. I'll tell you about that in a minute. It's not the right order. <laughs> so we've got, got them in the right order now to me. So we've got the inks on one side so that's really really fluid all water-based fantastic will go on absolutely any surface yeah permanent light fast really really fluid of course because it's ink and then we've got the system three fluid acrylic which is a kind of quite a new product i am absolutely loving this and it's great for things like acrylic pouring as well as using straight out of this little tube um, and you can do all sorts of things with that. It's got a little nozzle, love that. Uh, and then we've got the original acrylics. So these are the things that you probably see around most. In fact, I did a workshop in the, with the System 3 original acrylics. In fact, was that the second one? That was with water techniques and all sorts of things going on, brilliant. And today or tonight, we're gonna be looking at the heavy body acrylic. So I was holding them like this, because I've kind of got them in order of consistency. So we've got the most fluid being the ink all the way through to the heavy body, which is lovely and thick and meaty and texture. So if you love texture, you are absolutely gonna love this. And I've got some ideas that I'm gonna show you. So we're gonna be concentrating on the heavy body. So to me, this is like a little family and um, they've all got different characteristics or different personalities, I think. And uh, they do get on really well. So they work really well together. But um, they've all got these different sort of inherent properties. And the heavy body, I'd say it's a bit stubborn. It ain't going anywhere. I, I'll show you that in a minute. But they all work together really, really well. And, and fantastic colour range as well. So we're going to be looking at that. I'm going to show you one more thing, actually, because I did this earlier. And um, just to, I love this, I will love a little bit of, a, it's almost like a graph for artists and um, it's a colour graph because we can see again, we've got the heavy body here, then the original, the fluid in the ink, and you can see what happens when I put a blob of each of those different products, all in the same family, but they are very different consistencies and I think this explains it really well. Oh, I do love a lovely line look at that complete sort of line going through and you can see a big chunk of that heavy body it's not going anywhere it looks nice and dry so i hope that kind of gives you a little bit of a visual key to those products and the consistency and how different they are but look at the color so that was a i think that was a crimson so the crimson all the colors are completely identical throughout the family isn't that clever i love it brilliant so that's, um, that's a little bit about the System 3 family, but I'm going to put some of the family away. They're not allowed out to this party, but we're going to concentrate on the heavy body. So I'm going to take my camera overhead now and I'm going to start showing you a little bit about the magic of um, heavy body or just a little insight into what's coming after that. I'm going to be looking at Kandahar ink as well. And I'm sure a lot of you are familiar with ink, with using ink in all sorts of different ways. This is quite, I don't know, it's, it's different. I love it. And believe it or not, these two do something amazing together. Think of the most unlikely coupling you can and you think they're, they're never going to go they're never going to work together I've got a little bit of magic I'm going to show you when these two get together I'll come on to that in a minute but let's have a look at the heavy body so I'm going to take my camera overhead so you can have a good look at that and um, 
here we go. So I'm going to get some colours now. So let's have a look. I've got a yellow. Let's use that crimson as well. And a little bit of turquoise, a phthalo. Lovely, lovely. And so one of the major properties of the heavy body is its consistency. So let's get a little bit of each of those out. A bit of the phthalo on there and a bit of the crimson. So these are incredibly highly pigmented paints like all of the system three range they are they have got incredible pigments they're water resistant they are permanent they're light fast and you'll see they have excellent covering power and of course they all work together with the system three family there's my other little family members but you're going on the back seats for now you're out you're out the picture tonight you lot OK, so I'm going to put those to one side. Now, again, the heavy bodies can be used in lots of different ways. I put that there just as a little reminder. I love to use a palette knife with these because the texture is really, really incredible. It's lovely. So I've got a little range of palette knives, but let's just have a look at it. I'm just going to take that yellow through. One is I want you to have a look at the pigment. That is really, really intense, amazing. Let's take a little bit of that um, turquoise as well. And if I scrape it through, now this is um, the paper that I'm using, let's just have a quick look, is the System 3 acrylic paper. It's really robust. It's got a lovely linen texture, perfect for using with the heavy body paints. In fact, all of the System 3 family, but um, look, we can mix them together. So they're all intermixable. Look at that lovely green. You probably can't see that as well as I can see it in front of me, but that is a beautiful sort of um, leafy green. So we can mix them. The pigment is so strong. If I scrape it, it actually stains the paper. So we can see the color variation in the paper as I'm scraping it. And uh, let's have a look at that crimson as well. I love this. So let's have a look at how fantastic the heavy body is for creating texture. It has amazing uh, peak retention. So great for using uh, with a palette knife like this. And you can do all sorts of things with your palette knife. Let's put some over this color as well. Let's scrape back. We can just play around with this. I love it. I'm going to come on to a little technique that I use using the heavy body in a minute, but it is almost like icing. Let's scrape it all up together like that. And so you can blend like this, Jenny. I'm just watching you do it. So you can blend the colours a bit, or because it's so thick, you can layer them up. Is that right? That's kind of what I'm getting from what you're doing with them currently. Yeah, you can you can layer them up. Yeah, absolutely. And also, yes, you can mix them together. So they're all intermixable. And also, I said I wasn't going to bring them in, but we can mix them with the other system three uh, paints as well, the acrylic paints, the ink, the fluid and the original. So they're all intermixable. If I just put a little bit of water on as well, you might be able to see how um, the colour releases. So I just put a little bit of water on there take a brush um, and you can see how the colour is immediately released. So it has so much pigment in it. I mean, you could just take a little bit of that colour and thin it down and use it almost, you know, fluid like as well. So it's really got a lot of pigment. And that's something that's very, I think it's a little bit unique to the System 3 um, acrylic paints is how much pigment is in there. They're really, really good quality for, very, in fact, very reasonably priced um, to get a lot of colour, a lot of pigment out of your paints. So um, yeah, amazing, amazing colour. So lots of different ways to use it. I'm just going to grab another little bit of paper, actually, because I just want to show you just an example of how we, I can show you the um, how thick the paint is for creating almost impasto, an impasto effect. Oh, I've got so many colours here, I don't know what to choose. Let's have a little bit of this red um, again. So I'm going to take a bit of this, take a bit of my red, and I've got an acetate stencil here. 
And I'm just going to have a go at pasting it or a bit like Mary Berry doing the icing again. <laughs> I think I've done this before. I love a bit of I love a bit of a uh, Mary Berry. Look at that. Just pasting it through nicely, not too That's thick. Gorgeous. We can add yeah, multiple colours if we want to. Why not? Oof, love it. So then I lift away and we've got amazing impasto effect like that. And if I hold that up, I wonder if you can see, if I get it at the right angle, how thick that is. So this sort of three dimensional, great for creating texture work. Yeah, really. you, can see, you can just see when you're tilting it, yeah. And it's really flexible, yeah. really flexible. So you're not gonna get any cracking. I love this. I love the um, heavy body. It's, it's really, really versatile actually as well. So we've and had what, a, because it's so thick, Jenny. What what are the drying times like? It's not too bad actually. I mean, I've, I'm going to do a little seascape in a minute using heavy body, and it'll be dry in depending on how thick, half an hour. Well, it it yeah. depends how you kind of use it. It's pretty good actually because I think it's got less binder, more pigment. It's it's just full of pigment, and that's you know going to dry rather than yeah. having sort of glossy binder which our normal original acrylic the binder keeps our paint open which makes us be able to blend and paint for longer without it drying so unbelievably even though we use this thick the heavy body it's got a really good quick drying time which I, I quite like yeah that's brilliant well I'm going to get a new piece of paper and I'm just going to do a little mini. I've got some, I love painting on a, in a square, actually. Um, I just kind of like that format. So I've got some of my favourite colours here. And I'm just going to get those out. So look, here we go. I think I've got six, six colours. Look, I'm co uh, covered in red. Oh, I've got the tissue here. Okay, so I'm going to work in this square. And I've been working on these little seascapes, really quick little seascapes. And the heavy body is perfect for this. And I'm, I'm completely obsessed actually. I should be doing something else. I should be working on another project, but I can't stop doing this. So I'm gonna put a little bit of low tack tape just to hold my paper down. And it also creates a really nice border when I'm doing my really meaty texture. For the seascape and I really like um, working like this in the square. I've got my paint, so let's get a bit of palette and move that element around. You will come back in focus in a minute, hopefully. Um, I've got some ultramarine, some yellow ochre, I've got some burnt sienna. Ooh, it's so thick. I've got a little bit of that phthalo turquoise. I love that that one. A little bit of phthalo there. Some titanium white and some cad yellow deep. So out on my plate like that. Let's just put those to one side. Look, I'm covered in red paint. I'm terrible. Where did I get that from? <laughs> that is, that is definitely well. an occupational hazard. <laughs> Well, I'm going to ask you a ridiculous question, and so I'll caveat it with, I know it's a ridiculous question. What's your favourite colour? <gasps> I love that. I love this one. The What's phalo. The, the phalo turquoise. Turquoise. And how yeah. do you pronounce, this is awful. I, I'm not very good at pronouncing turquoise. turquoise. Whoa. Somebody help oh. me with that. I'm going to just say turquoise. And if I think about it, I'm going to say it weird. So I'm going with that. <laughs> I always say it weird, that one. But that is happens to be my favourite colour. That and the I, magenta. I love the yellow that you've just, the mustardy yellow colour that can, yeah, that's fantastic. The yellow ochre. Yeah, love so that. Fantastic colour range as well. So you're not limited with your colour palette with these. There we go, I'll just put them there. Right, okay, I've got a few little scraps of paper here. These are the scraps, in fact, that I cut off from my A4 sheet out of the System 3 acrylic pad. So I've just squared this off and I've got these little leftover strips that were here. So waste not, want not, I'm gonna use them. 
So the first thing I'm going to kind of visualize in my mind's eye, separating this into thirds. And this is, I promise you, this is really, really quick. Um, if I was doing this in the studio, I would spend a bit longer on this. I'd filly faddle for a bit longer, technical term, the filly faddle. Um, so I'd play around sort of adding a bit more, but I just want to do this quickly to give you the idea of how we can create a really effective seascape, but it's also really good fun to do. So let's start off with the top strip, which will be my sky. So I'm just going to take some of my ultramarine and using my palette knife, I'm scraping it quite firmly across my paper. So the more that I scrape it, the lighter it is because I'm actually taking it off and it's kind of staining the paper rather than sort of laying great clumps of it on top. I might add a little bit of white into that so I could mix it with my palette knife as I go. So let's mix in a little bit of that, not too much. So I've got a bit of a sky going on there, but I am gonna come back to that. And I can go over my tape with my palette knife like that. So something a bit like that. And then I'm going to do the second third. So the second third, that makes sense, doesn't it? Um, with my other, oh, I've got a lovely little um, strip here. And I'm just going to lay that gently over the top. Because I'm using my palette knife, I want to get the edge of the paper. It's my masking out, really. I won't press too hard. So let's go in with a little bit of the Thalo Tuck Woys and, and just pop that on as well. So scraping that across. Ooh, just holding that with my fingers. I'm sort of trying to get my, uh, get it sort of parallel, even. I could put a little bit of white in with this as well, here and there. Like that. Oh, I quite like that colour. Oh, that's nice. Some of these um, sort of colours and, and effects that happen are often um, through either making a mistake or just literally being very experimental. I'm just going to lift that off lightly. Now I'm going to take, I've got, so I'll show you my little box of bits here. I've got all sorts of off cuts of card. And this is some mount card. I've got some um, packaging card. And as you know, if you know me, I really like using all sorts of things to paint with, apart from my lovely palette knives and brushes. And I've got some card here. One side, when it's cut across, we have the serrated sort of edge, that lovely kind of wavy line. And on the other side, it's just sort of flat with, with a nice edge. So let's have a go and see what this does. I've also got some slightly thicker um, sections of mount board just cut off. So I'm going to have a go with those two. I'm going to go into the white and just take some of it on my card and I'm just going to pull it over. I'm going to print and just pull sections over and I'm trying to get a little bit of a wave effect here just in lines. So keeping them sort of fairly parallel, but then just doing a little, just pulling over a little bit like a little wave. I can. Let's have a go with, I'm going to turn the card around and I'm going to use the other edge and I'm going to get mix up on my plate a little bit of the turquoise and the ultramarine. So I'm just making a little bit of a darker blue and I just want to go, oh, let's go underneath a little bit now. So underneath some of those waves and a few lines across. So just building up the texture and effect, seeing what the card, the shapes of the card gives us and just adjusting as I go. I love it. It's always a little bit of a surprise. Let's have a go with this piece of card now. So this is the one, this is the straight edge, not the wavy edge. Let's give it a little, um, what should we do? Let's put in a little bit of white again. And I just want to bring some of those waves over. Uh, a little bit more so kind of almost a straight line and then pulling it sweeping it over slightly sort of accidentally a little bit more across 
like that. I don't know what I don't know what it's going to look like, but it helps when I take my paper away. So I've got the sky and a bit of sea. So let's have a go at the foreground now. So I'm going to cover up again, and this time I'll give my palette knife a wipe. And I'm going to go in, I'm going to start off with this lovely burnt sienna, gorgeous colour, and it's quite red. So let's get some of that in the foreground. And I'm going to start layering up my uh, heavy body paint. So I'm going to take a little bit of the yellow ochre, that's your, one of your favourite colours there. Oh, I think I'm going to go in a bit darker here. And maybe a little bit of the turquoise mixed with that uh burnt sienna just for a little bit more oh look at that a little bit more depth a bit darker wipe my palette knife again and now i'm going to mix up some white with the yellow ochre so let's go in really pale now sort of sand we can keep layering and I'm doing this wet in wet, so I'm not adding, I haven't mixed any water with these paints. And of course you can, if you want to, completely, um, you know, can be used in so many different ways. So you can make them more fluid, very, very versatile, just playing around with my palette knife. Um, what I like to do as well is I'm just, going to, let's put a bit more in the foreground. Don't really have too much of a, oh look, I love that. When you put a bit more uh, paint on the palette knife and just take it across the last layer, very, very gently, you get these incidental sort of little pits and holes. And this is what I really love about um, using this paint is that you often don't know what you're going to get until you play and I think it is about playing and enjoying and seeing what this product does oh just very gently pulling it across so I've got these little gaps and really interesting things happening what if I use the end of my palette knife I'm just going to draw make some little marks I'm going to open up that texture a little bit more maybe I've got a barbecue stick here for a thinner, smaller, scratchier line. So I could sort of scratch into it. And then if I don't like that being so open, I'll go in with some more paint. I might use a bigger palette knife, get a little bit more um, coverage. And I'm just gonna draw this across. So my mark making, is slightly sort of covered up again. So it's just creating the palette knife is, is sort of covering them and just creating some quite interesting little um, shapes. So I can play around with more color. Let's put a bit more of that dark on down here. I can scratch into, there's all sorts of things that I could do. I just love that color. Let's put a bit more of that on. The other thing is, is that we could use the edge of the palette knife to do some printing. So I'm gonna mix up a little bit of that yellow with the blue, the turquoise, create a little bit of green. Now, I've been painting some little scenes. If you're local to Winchester, you've probably most likely been down to Muddiford my favorite place and I'm very lucky because I've got a friend who's got a beach hut down there and uh, I did some little sketches of looking at the needles from Muddyford Beach and uh, I'm going to show you those in a minute but they were done in exactly the same way so printing just playing around might want to go back in scratch a bit more oh a little bit of grass so they have these dunes as well with grass and I just love creating texture, seeing what the palette knife does. And let's just pull that away. So I'm starting to build up my little seascape. The next thing, the last thing I've got to do, we could add all sorts of things to this. I'm just gonna mask that off again with my little bit of card. And I think I'll just put a little bit of kind of some land in the um just along the horizon there just to give it a little bit of context 
And again, oh, look, I love it. So if you go wrong, don't worry. Look, you can just scrape it back again. If you think, oh, I didn't like that there, you can just literally, because it's still wet, you could just scrape it back, change the shape of it, um, add some more color. Oh, I like that on top. I love doing this sort of very gentle palette knife texture on top of what I've already got. Mix up some dark again. You can see it is great fun. Ooh, let's put it. Oh, I love it when it gets really meaty. Oh, it's really, really thick there now. Oh, love that. So you can see how you can have so much fun with this. I love it. And look, I've got a little bit of that green. So it's not, not in the right place. I'm just going to scrape that off. Look at that, just scrape it away. That's perfect. So something like that, you know, that is how I would go about creating my little seascape. Oh, I feel like I need some clouds. Right, a little bit more white. So I'm going to put this straight on my palette knife. <laughs> and let's just add with my palette knife the effect of some clouds, just pressing and pulling away doing it gently. Again, you get these sort of incidental textures with the palette knife. Ooh, I like that. A little bit more, just creating a line on top of my, I don't think that's the Isle of Wight. I think that's, um, well, I'm thinking this is the needles here. There we go. Something a bit like that. And if I go back to use my um, little stick, you can even put in some little, I don't think you can see it so tiny, some little seagulls while wow, that paint is still wet. I love that. So easy to do. I've got paint all over my hands again. And then if we just take our tape away, so this is a low tack tape, very gently. This is what I love. It all makes sense when we take the tape away and we've got this amazing meaty texture it really comes to life and when you take this off it is just delightful and you get the edge the crisp edge and all that crazy texture really really lovely so That's fantastic you've made that look so easy so easy <laughs> three blue turquoise Brownie, sandy, yellow, with a bit of mishmash going on in the in the foreground. Honestly, have a go at that with those uh, heavy body paint. It's the paint. It's the magic paints that do it. I love that. I've been completely obsessed with that. Doing this little scene, and I'll show you behind me. I'm just going to grab one of these. I've sort of added a little bit more. I've got them in. I've got them in plastic only because I'm so messy. That um, I wonder if the camera will pick this. In fact, I'll take it out. Yeah, it will, it will come back. It will come back. There we go. So look. You've got a little boat in that one. The boat, the needles, tiny, tiny, tiny lighthouse there. So exactly the same way. I've done that in how many minutes was that? 10, 15 minutes? 10 minutes, minutes. Yeah. yeah. So a little bit more time and a bit of practice. Honestly, you'll love that really really great fun to do I'm and would you that. suggest jenny obviously you've been using a palette knife you i'm assuming you can use paint brushes if that's what you've got is there anything you need to be sort of wary of or is the palette knife much easier because of the thickness of the paint do you know what it is personal preference i tend to use a combination of brush and palette knife um i i use both but i just wanted to show you this little technique to to, to almost it shows off the heavy body in a demo like this, you know, really, really well because you can play around with that texture. And it's one of the kind of unique selling points to me of this paint. But absolutely, I'm going to show you how I use it with a brush next. So we'll we'll do a little combination and we're bringing the ink as well. But you can absolutely do the same thing with a brush. You could use card, you could use, you know, a little Thick little stick to um, if you've got it thicker with a brush, you can still scratch into it. So a combination, yeah. I'll put that to one side for now, and um, we're going to look at look at the ink now. So I'm going to lay this down with my lid on. So we were talking, weren't we, Claire? When we did our little run through, there's my um, heavy body which I've been using, and I've <laughs> come up with this really lovely technique where I'm using the heavy body, the, the properties of the heavy body paint, which is 
water resistant with the properties of the drawing ink, which isn't water resistant, but it has it has a little bit of water resistant to it, but it's not totally. So it's not like an Indian ink. And important I'm just the difference we would yeah. do thing. Yeah. We'll put that to one side. Well, actually, you know, we were talking about, I'm going to show you, yeah, I'll come on to this, how these two go together. Honestly, they're going to get, they're going to get married and they, you know, they are literally a little perfect um, match made in heaven, these two. I'll show you that in a minute. Um, but the inks, we were, yeah, we were talking about the difference is the technique that I'm going to show you now really requires the Kandahar ink because it is not water resistant, whereas the India ink has some water resistant properties. So if you paint that and run it under a tap, it will, it won't go anywhere. So that's, that's good as well. But we're going to have a look at our Kandahar ink. Let's just get a piece of um, paper. I'll just very quickly get this open. I'm going to put some in a little cup like this because I know I'm going to tip this whole pot over because I'm like that. So let's put that to one side. Let's get a brush and just show you. Really, really lovely. So Kandahar ink. The drawing ink, lovely, lovely, deep, rich black. It's light fast. It's got fantastic flow properties, as you can see. It's great for um, illustration and also mixed media. It works on all sorts of different surfaces. So that's a really, really, look at that. Oh, I love this. Do, do, do. Gorgeous, gorgeous um, covering power as well. So great for all sorts of um, projects. So that's our Kandahar ink. I also really like to use it with, if I can find it in here, look at me little jam jar of things. Where is it? <laughs> One of these little drawing um, tools, a ruling pen. These are quite fun to use. So you can get some lovely lines. You can change the thickness of, of the line by just spinning the little wheel and closing the um, little pincers. So that's, a I mean, that's something I'd put a pot of that in my drawing kit and uh, for sketching, really nice for drawing with. Um, okay, so that's our Kandahar ink. You can see the quality, really, really lovely. Let's put that to one side for now. And um, I'm going to show you, we'll come back to the heavy body because I want to show you a fab technique. And um, this, is, this is a funny one. I've got my little steps here, which is why it looks a bit funny, because I'm going to take you through step by step. And you were asking about using a brush. So let's uh, put that to what, oh, I'm in, I need a bigger table. My table's massive and I even need a bigger one than the one I've got. More room. Okay, so I've got my, yeah plate there I just want to make sure you can see and I'm going to put some paints out and I'm just going to paint a little bit of this to show you how I got to this stage these are just really lovely very quick um, roses so let's get some color on uh, a little bit of yellow here let's get some white and I'm going to use my brush a bit of red a bit of green um, I'm, I'm putting way more colour on my palette than you need, by the way, but I, I feel like I don't want to run out while I'm doing it on the camera. So I love this brush. Uh, it's a round System 3, Dale Rowney little brush, long handle, and it's really great for doing these very loose uh, roses. Let's move that up a bit. Um, and so all I would do, let's go in with a little bit of yellow. I might make a few versions of my yellow, a little bit of white, like this, and just start off. And I love the brush on, on the here, the bristles, the shape of the bristle, bristle well, I can't speak, bristles on the brush are perfect for doing these very loose roses. That's, in fact, that's how quick it is. And what I want to do for this particular technique, I don't want to cover all the paper. I want to leave some white paper for the effect that I'm going to show you. Let's do a pink one now. So same thing, I'll mix up some a sort of dark pink and then I'll have a bit of a lighter one. And then maybe with some with a bit of white in it on my palette as well. So let's do 
one of those. So just using the brush strokes to create these very loose uh, roses like this. And uh, just love that paint, really gorgeous. So you're building up these very, very loose roses and I would fill this up. I've even got some little rosebuds here. So again, look, just a couple of brush strokes with this small uh, brush like that. I quite like the long end because it keeps you nice and loose and it doesn't, you don't get all sort of stuck in on your page, keeps it nice and loose. So with my colors like this, and then I get to this point here. Let's get that in the middle. Um, and then I'm sort of building them up. So the next thing I want to do is to do my um, little petal, uh, my leaves. And this time I've got an angle shader. And again, this is really, really a lovely brush to use. It's quite short. It's quite stubby, but it's got an angle. Can you see if I hold it, I hold it in the right place? Yeah, we, yeah, we can see that. So let's let's mix up again a few greens, some darker ones with the blue, like that. And then again, I'm keeping the paint nice and thick and you can see how the angle, I've got lots of paint on my brush, but I'm only sort of depositing some of it, not all of it, but I am keeping the brush strokes loose. I'm still using that tip of my brush to create these leaves, I like that. And I'm changing the color. I'm not being perfect about this. You know, well, I'm a little bit loose the way I paint anyway. I love kind of that free, uh, loose painting. And I like the brush strokes to show as well. So I build that up like that. I try and get some uh, dark areas in as well. So I might go back in with a little bit of dark like this. So using that point of the brush again, the perfect shape brush to, um, oh, I couldn't say that after gin and tonic, perfect shape, shape brush. Um, let's move that, I keep going out of the camera, I'm going the wrong way, I'm all opposites here. So building it up. We've also got a few little um, petals on our little buds. So bing, 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 like that. Bing, 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 like that. It's all very loose. Bing, bing, bing. And a little line like that to create the little rose buds. Bing, but using the edge of the brush. I love it when you find a tool, the right brush, and it almost does the job for you. That's my perfect scenario. So I'm building it up. I'm going to go on to the next one now. Um, Jenny, before you go on to the next one, do you want to hold that up close? Yes. So, yes. Again, you make it look incredibly easy, but so we can see the brush strokes. Okay. And you've created those. On this one. Yeah, and then I'll hold it up. Perfect. So I'm going to do this yellow flower like that, leaving some gaps in between, leaving a little bit of white. So I'm not adding any water, remember, to this. Like that. So very, very loose. You could paint anything in this way. It doesn't have to be flowers. I'm going to show you something in a minute if we've got time. Um, the rosebuds, I'll hold it up just in one sec. So we've got another rosebud there. I'll do a few leaves and then I'll bring it up to camera. So I'm going to finish a few leaves like this and a bit of dark. I love all those different greens that you can get. One there. And then are using the edge again of the brush, bing, 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 like that. Let's do one more there. Okay, I'm gonna put my palette down, I'll hold it up. Let's get these out of the way. Let's see if I can paint it, paint something with it right up to the camera. Fantastic. Is that better? Yeah. I think just just gives you the an idea of how you've done how you've done that. So and if this, I hold this, this up thing. here, yeah. Can you see how I'm just doing some little veins using my again the edge of the brush. 
And it's a bit, it's a bit like you do not need the tiniest little brush to do this. You can use the same brush for everything because I'm just simply padding the tip, the edge, and using it, the tip to create the veins on the leaves. It's difficult to get my hand not in the camera and let's try that. Does that? So just bing, 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 like that. Let's do one there. You know, it's not about being perfect. It's about a little bit of character. Ding, 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 like that. Bing, 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 bing. And I think that's it. So can you see how loose that is? Yep. Really, really thick and nice and loose. Okay, so Lovely. that side is still wet. This is the wet side. This is one I did earlier, which is dry. So this is where my little technique comes in. So I'm going to take this one. Hang on. I'm just going to cut this one off actually, so we don't get confused. That one's wet and this one is dry. Okay. Right, so this is where this lovely coupling of two things that you didn't that you didn't think were ever going to go together. Do we know any any couples like that, Claire? <laughs> yeah, we were talking about Love Island. I was going to make a Love Island reference, and actually, it's just not appropriate. I was watching it again last night. It's yeah, it's not okay. So sorry, everybody, for mentioning it, but I am a little bit obsessed at the moment. Oh, that's hilarious! Terrible confession. <laughs> Oh, I'm never going to look at you in the same way. Okay. And I feel I should apologise. <laughs> we got anybody agreeing <laughs> with that? Oh, no. Anyway, so look, Kandahar ink and heavy body paint, a little match made in heaven. They are like that couple that you think, surely, I can't believe that they're together, but they are perfect. Who'd have thought? Okay, so I've got some of my ink in a little pot. And this is lovely and dry now because I did it yesterday, that one. So, so we're going to use the properties of the ink to give me something rather interesting. Believe it or not, I'm just going to paint all over my picture like this. Got a nice soft brush. <laughs> I always worry and I think, what am I doing? I actually really hope this works. <laughs> So all over the top like that. So a nice even coverage. And remember what we said about the Kandahar ink, it isn't water resistant, but the heavy body paint is. So what happens when my next trick, right, we're gonna dry. I'm gonna put my hair dryer on for a minute, Claire. So hopefully the sound will go off in a minute, but I, you might not okay. be able to hear me. So this is a really good point for anyone to ask any questions about anything while I'm drying. I'll be a minute. Perfect. Okay, go. And it's actually, we, we can't hear the hair dryer, just all gone a bit quiet. So the magic, will reveal very shortly. Now, actually, you might all be aware already, but Jenny's attending the Patches Festival in a couple of weeks' time, so I'm going to include that in a, in a moment. I'll share the link for everybody. That's the 14th to the 17th of July in Calverton near Nottingham. So there's lots and lots of art demonstrations and activity and artists in attendance. So um, it sounds like an amazing event. Um, I'll share the details for that in a bit. And also we've got um, the hair trail uh, to share with you as well that Denny's been doing. So uh, she's painted a, a huge hair of the bunny variety um, uh, as part of the hair trail in, in Southampton. So uh, fantastic. If anybody wants to check that out, um, it sounds like an amazing uh, adventure. I think I heard you mention the hair trail. I was talking about the hair trail and I was also talking about patching in a couple oh of weeks' time. So I just wanted to mention it so I didn't forget. 
Oh, please. Anna, actually, Anna's just sharing it with everyone now. So um, it's in oh, the chat. Fantastic. And if, um, if anyone hasn't, do give me a follow on Instagram because the whole process of the hair painting, six foot hair is on my Instagram. So I'd love it if you gave me a little follow and you can track back and see all the videos of using system three, believe it or not, using system three paints to paint a six foot hair. Good stuff. Love okay. That. Right, that is nice and dry. So, so now, you, now you've totally vandalised your artwork. <laughs> <laughs> you've, you've destroyed it. I have, you're making me worried. I'm going to take my tape. I do like a border. I like a border. This isn't a very good border, but I like a border. You're just using, you say low tack. So masking tape, decorating tape. Yeah, That's decorating it. tape. I use it a lot. It's really good. Um, that's nice and dry right now because my tap <laughs> I'm just, just going to really I'm going to come back to you for one second while I do this um, <laughs> my tap's over there so I, can't, I was trying to work out how I get the camera to the tap but without I can't do that so I've come up with this little plan I have got in a true blue Peter style got a baking tray and a bucket of water right I'm going to go back <laughs> I hope I can get back. Right, okay, I've got my baking tray and I've got some water here. So let's put the water in my tray. And so what I'm gonna do now, we were talking about, so here's my picture. It could be anything by the way, Let, you know, it doesn't have to be roses. We were thinking about the properties of that heavy body paint, it's water resistant and the ink isn't. But because the heavy body paint is so thick, we have uh, we get a really interesting technique when we put our whole piece of paper in the water and I'm going to submerge it. And already things are starting to happen, but I'm going to help it along a bit and give it just rub those flowers back. And I absolutely love it's a bit of magic. The paper is so robust that it's taking all of this effect. And that's not different paper, Jane, that's still the system no, three. Yeah, paper. this is a system three again, mind you. Yeah, system yeah, three. Yeah, that's the standard. There's, I think there's a heavy duty one as well, but that's the standard one. Yeah, this isn't know. even the heavy duty. Yeah. Heavy, yeah, yeah, heavy weight. Yeah. Heavy duty, I love heavy that. Heavy duty. I've gone <laughs> DIY. It's because we've got a baking tray in a bucket. <laughs> I'm doing some heavy duty art tonight. <laughs> so I just rub back. And what I love again is this crazy thing that happens where you get some of the black ink stays on the, the paint and some of it comes off and you can rub away as much or as little as you want to. I like to sort of go rub as much as possible, but keep some of the texture and the ink where it sits in the kind of texture and folds of that paint. And look at on the paper, it's just sitting on the paper, but look at this, it's just a little bit of magic. I love it. That is amazing. So really, you can see the texture of the paper as well, because it has that little linen um, effect to it, that woven effect. And that's really lovely in places as well. So imagine the fun that you can have with that technique. I can see the brush strokes. So where I've kept my paint nice and thick, the ink sitting in the brush strokes, it's still, it can still see all the detail and the veining and the leaves. And the color is so vibrant because of the mm. pigment in the paints. It's just- Which is amazing. Really it doesn't beautiful. take anything away. The ink doesn't take anything away from that at all from the yeah. colors, it's incredible. Great technique, you've got to try it honestly, so much fun and, and you can see all the layers of all the different colors of the paints where I put them down with that brush, the brush strokes. And look, the paper, really robust, it hasn't, you know, gone through, fantastic, love that, lots and lots of different things that you can do with it. I'm just going to remove my baking tray. <laughs> you have gone full Mary Berry today. <laughs> I always have to have a bit of kitchen alia. Yeah. yeah, you do. Love it. And actually, we were saying when Jenny was doing us a demo of this yesterday, the 
quite like the idea of the black and as we as we come into Christmas until I'm thinking ahead at the moment but oh here we go uh, but something with something glittery sparkly some, some sort of festive colour as well would look incredible. I'm, I'm not going to do this one I'm literally going to take you through as if I was because I'm now and I don't think I need to go through it but I'm going to do a quick step by step literally just showing you first step tape around the paper and then I'm using back with my cardboard strips and I'm pulling color down and I've used a piece of masking tape to, to, to create a strip across my paper so if I pull that away we're going to get a nice uh, line so can you see there so that's my first step building up uh, strips of colour. I think I might have shown you the final one before. Anyway, if you've forgotten that, it'll be exciting to see what's gonna happen. Cause this is another, um, this is based on somewhere near me, not too far from me anyway. And I'm sure if you're local, you will completely guess where this is. Um, and then I've taken my tape off and I've reapplied it back across the strip. But so I've got the top part of the paper free. And again, I'm using my card and my paint. Again, the heavy body paint straight out of the tube. I haven't added any water to it. I'm using card, I'm using uh, fingers, I'm using brushes. I've got little, I've cut rubbers into shapes that I'm printing with for these little blocks as well. Okay, let's move on to the next one. And then I've got a little bit more further, further, further ahead like this. Again, building it up, using little bits of card to print. You can, I think you can see what it is. Answers, do, do write in the chat if you think you know where this is. Does anybody be. know? It's local to me. Um, so building up. And then my final piece would just be a little bit more detail, creating a little bit of a heavier um line across here to differentiate the water from the um cranes and then what's the final one couple, there we of, go. couple of guesses in oh yeah southampton docks by perfect <laughs> perfect yay do you know if you go to ikea or john lewis john lewis, and you'll know if you're local if you go to john lewis and have a cup of tea and a scone, you get a really good view of Southampton Docks from there. And I've often thought about taking my classes um, there to do some work. I've never got round to it, but every time I go, I look at it and think, oh, that'd make a great place to sketch. So yes, yeah, so Southampton Docks, but my technique with the black ink is Southampton Docks at night. So I would then paint my, um, paint my paper, with the ink and then wash it off in exactly the same way, the same technique as the roses. And finally, I've just added a little bit more using my Kandahar ink when it's dry, I'm just painting in a little bit more detail on top just to give it uh, that final look. That I, I think that, that that's almost looking festive, sparkly because of it's giving that the light effect in the picture. It, it has got that, sense. yeah, it's almost sort of fairground. Twinkle. Yeah. It has, yeah, it really has. So there we go. Some interesting techniques with um, heavy body and uh, Kandahar ink. Part Amazing. of that lovely System 3 family. And I think that's probably <laughs> all we've got time I, for. I, 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 and I, I think it is, but I think we need everyone to go off and have a try. Absolutely. Um, I think everyone loving the tech technique as ever Jenny that's amazing um, and you make it look so easy and I know from the previous ones we've done where I've had a try you do you definitely need some artistic skill but it you can as a big I'm a you know you know I'm a beginner so I had a bash at um the previous one with my my children and they loved it and they love what they produced as well so you can still get a really good result uh, which is amazing I love both of these techniques I think they're fabulous the products are, are brilliant I also, you described the heavy duty paint as meaty. First yeah. time we've had a meaty paint, love it. And uh, I'm really enjoying the big reveal with the baking tray as well. I think the last one we did, we might've had cotton buds. 
Um, so there's all some kitchen equipment, sponges, kitchen sponges. So there's always some unusual um, equipment and things from around the house that you can use, which is brilliant. So thank you as ever, amazing demo. So for everyone, if you're still here, we are gonna finish the workshop in just a minute. I just wanted to let you know, um, to just remind you that um, we shared a code when you signed up. If you do wanna get some of the materials and you don't have these, I think a couple of people are saying they haven't tried the Kandahar ink before, um, and I think we probably all want to have a try now, then um, the code was shared in the sign up with you, workshop 20. So that is usable up until tomorrow. Uh, so if you do want to get anything, then you, you do need to crack on, but there's a nice little discount attached to that. We, as ever, would love to see your creations. So if you're going to go off and have a go, then please share them with us. We've got a social media hashtag, Colt Pens Creative, but also you can just email us. It's help at coltpens.com. And if you're happy, we would always love to share your um, artwork as well. But you don't have to, so don't, don't be afraid if you really don't want to share and you think we're going to put it up everywhere. We will always check. Um, so yeah, please share, and you can follow Jenny. I think Jenny, if they just look up the Colour Factory, they'll well, find at, you. Won't so, yeah, if you look up Jenny Muncaster, uh, do give me a follow on Instagram because that's where I put most of my how tos and little tips and tricks and news and what I'm up to. And then there's a link through to the Colour Factory. So follow Jenny Muncaster, yeah, and I will will share all of that as well. We'll send out the video in the next uh, couple of days. So we'll share the details so you can um, uh, follow Jenny. We'll put all the links in so you won't, you won't miss out on anything. Um, so yeah, thank you very much for joining. If you um, also follow Jenny, find out more about Patchings and we've shared the link to the festival. We'll share that too. Um, and uh, check out the hair trail if you're in the area because it looks incredible. Um, so thank you very much, Jenny, again. Always a pleasure for you to join us, amazing. And thanks everyone for joining. I think we've covered all the questions. So we will see you at the next workshop. See you all soon. Have an amazing evening. Thanks very much. Bye.